people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. The India growth story is set to maintain its growth momentum as the global lender body IMF has maintained an optimistic outlook for the country with growth rate pegged at 5.9% for the next fiscal year despite a revision. It is estimated that India alongside China will grow at the fastest pace in the world and will account for half of the global growth. Experts say the projections are even more significant for they have come at a time when the entire world is plagued by the triad of geopolitical tensions, looming inflation and a fuel crisis. Indian economic policies stand vindicated as the International Monetary Fund projected country's growth rate at 5.9% for the current financial year. The global lender body said Indian economy will continue to perform well and will be one of the fastest growing economies in the world. It is also another sign of how the countries from the global south are increasingly dominating the global discourse. While India is likely to clock 5.9% growth rate, China will grow at 5.3%, resurging from contractions and slow growth. This year, India and China are going to deliver half of global growth. But we have quite a number of uh, economies that are facing a very uh, stiff uh, climb. Uh, economic activity is slowing down in uh, 90% of advanced economies in the US, in the Euro area, where high interest rates weight on demand. And we are going to uh, see in uh, low income countries, higher borrowing costs coming at the time of weakening demand for their exports. Investment has been the key driver of India's growth as evidenced by double-digit credit growth, strong PMIs and an ambitious budgeted government spending program. Infrastructure investment will showcase a large impact on the medium term. That's why it will remain an important policy priority. Other than this, net exports are also expected to perform well in the coming time. Specifically, exports of services will perform very strongly. The Asian Development Bank too has released an optimistic report card of the South Asian economy, wherein India will not just perform much better than the rest, but will also drive growth in the rest of the region. South Asia will remain the best performing subregion this year, driven by robust growth in India which we think will remain high both this year and next year. Expressing confidence in the two South Asian nations being drivers of growth in the future, experts believe that India and China can act as key economic engines. They are capable of driving global growth through consumption, investment and trade. Observers say India's growth is principally based on becoming the center of technological innovation, fostering global advancements in sectors like information technology, renewable energy and artificial intelligence. Observers say India and China both being the dominant forces from all aspects strengthening South-South cooperation which is likely to rule the global discourse in times to come will also promote economic development and stability in the region. Moving on. 
The island nation of Sri Lanka, which has been reeling under economic crisis for several months and is now attempting to emerge on the financial backing provided by the IMF and other allies like India, is unlikely to meet its targets this year. The Asian Development Bank has projected another year of contraction for the Vikrame Singh-led government. Country's economy is expected to further shrink by 3% this year after it suffered a 7.8% contraction last year. Citizens say the economic aspect of their lives hasn't improved even marginally despite the elite political corner drum beating the IMF bailout program and essentially calling the financial crisis a thing of the past. We have a report for you. Sri Lankan troubles are far from over. The Asian Development Bank has projected a grim economic year ahead for the island nation of Sri Lanka, whose economy, it said, will perform better than the last year but will still contract by as much as 3 percentage point in 2023. While appreciating the efforts made by the government of Sri Lanka, be it in the form of reversing the tax policy of 2019, or country's efforts at stabilizing its macroeconomics, ADB said the country still has a long way to go to return to its previously healthy economic stage. International Monetary Fund, the global lender, recently approved a 48-month arrangement under the extended fund facility of about 3 billion US dollars to support Sri Lanka's economic policies and reforms. As per different experts, Sri Lanka needs to enhance domestic resource mobilization, improve performance of state-owned enterprises, strengthen public financial management, encourage private sector activities, build strong institutions, and increase transparency. A few days ago, President Vikrama Singhe had said that his cabinet was working hard to rein in inflation so that a conducive atmosphere could be created for people to emerge from the crisis. Uddamani Anupate, Sieta Hatarai, Sieta Hayak Katar, Anupate, Nevata Gene Mata Katu to Karno. May one with Uddamani, Salaku to Matamiki, Adukilima Tapta Hakuna. A same Vista Visuna Vasa, Madaba gave one with Uddamani, Anupate, Tania Giakta, Gene Matapi, Utsaha Gano. May Salasma Kriat Makar Nakale Tuladi. The common people on the other side, however, are struggling to make their ends meet. They say their lives haven't improved even by a bit despite the government making claims of the beginning of better times. Although the country's central bank expressed optimism that prices would decelerate sharply in the coming months, Sri Lanka's key inflation rate hit 50.3% in March, while food inflation was at 47.6% as per the data released by the Census and Statistics Department. Businesses were also feeling the burnt of consumers' lower spending power. Oh, then I this make a Sri Lanka has been struggling with soaring prices for over a year, largely caused by its worst financial crisis since it gained independence from Britain in 1948. Last month, Sri Lanka received the first tranche worth $300 million of a $3 billion bailout program agreed with the International Monetary Fund. This is the 17th International Monetary Fund bailout for Sri Lanka and the third since its decades-long civil war ended in 2009. Sri Lanka has also been supported by its allies like India, China and Japan, whose timely assistance helped the island nation in presenting a case before the IMF. Observers, however, say it needs to consistently work in the same direction in order to restore the damaged economy pre-crisis level and put in even more to research. 
Sri Lankan authorities would be required to manage popular anger and people's needs as well, besides tweaking or altering its economic foundations. Moving on, one of India's core strengths is her strong agriculture sector, which has made the country self-sufficient for its food security needs. India currently possesses the capability of producing sufficient food for 18% of the world's population by using just 12% of the world's land resources and a mere 4% of the global water resources. India's farmers have been well utilizing the country's 20 agri-climatic regions, 15 major climates in all 46 types of soils found in India, the piece of land that we, 1.4 billion people, call home. Advancements, investments and government support have empowered India's Kisan and its farming sector. Join us as we explore India's agriculture sector in all its grandeur, its impact and its future. This year, the budgetary allocations of over 15 billion USD for 2023 to 2024 to the agriculture and allied sector included 9,000 crores allocated specifically for farmer education. Krasi ke drishti se bhi baat mahatpoorn goshlaay ki gayi hain. Is baar ek lakh पंद्रह हजार करोड़ से अधिक कृषि मंत्रालय का बजट है कृषि शिक्षा के लिए नौ हजार करोड़ रुपया तो लगभग कुल मिला के एक लाख पच्चीस हजार करोड़ रुपया एग्रीकल्चर पे प्रावधान किया है जो निश्चित रूप से बहुत ही अच्छा है the agriculture sector, which currently employs 56.4% of India's population, is on track for exponential growth in the country's eight agriculture clusters, Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal, Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka, Maharashtra, Punjab, Rajasthan, and Assam. Over time, Multiple governmental efforts in the agriculture field have made India the world leader in the production of spices, pulses, milk, tea, cashews and jute, and the second largest producer of wheat, rice, fruits and vegetables, sugarcane, cotton and oil seeds. Digital public infrastructure for agriculture will be built as an open source, open standard, an interoperable public good. This will enable inclusive farmer-centric solutions and agriculture accelerator fund will be set up to encourage agri-startups by young entrepreneurs in rural areas. The fund will aim at bringing innovative and affordable solutions for challenges faced by farmers. We will launch an Atmanirbhar clean plant program to boost availability of disease-free quality planting material for high-value horticultural crops. Outside the halls of parliament, India's private sector has also increased their support for the development of the agricultural industry in India. India's conducive environment for startups has also reached the fields and farms of India. No longer remaining limited to business hubs, agricultural startups are being established all over India by the capable youth of our country. India is no longer a land of uneducated farmers. The revolution of the agricultural sector has resulted in several well-established and educated young entrepreneurs turning to farmlands, initiating more than 1,300 agri-startups. A lot of scope of building up India first solutions exist in Indian agriculture field. And that is where a lot of startups, including us, have been working together and trying to solve the problems of agriculture through the latest in technology and financial services that we could bring to the table. Several modernizations have resulted in the introduction of artificial intelligence 
and machine learning into the agricultural sector, and the establishment of government and private platforms for supporting and creating a conducive ecosystem for the sale of agricultural produce. Agricultural-based startups have the aim to ensure that scientific and cutting-edge technology reaches and utilizes the entire capable soil of India, east to west, north to south. While women have long been integral to the agricultural industry in India, female entrepreneurs have entered the rapidly revolutionizing market, providing it with a rather different approach and a different perspective. Time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. China recently conducted three days of military drills around Taiwan, which ended on Monday last week. China said it had tested integrated military capabilities under actual combat conditions, having practiced precision strikes and blockading the island that Beijing views as its own. The Chinese military later said it had successfully completed the exercises and comprehensively tested the capabilities of multiple units. International powers including the US, European Union, Japan and other countries said they were closely following the developments around Taiwan. China has never renounced the use of force to bring the democratically governed island under Beijing's control. Taiwan's government strongly disputes China's claims and has condemned the drills. North Korea's state-run television this week broadcast video footage of the country's test launch of its new solid fuel ICBM, the Haosong-18. North Korea fired what appeared to be a new type ballistic missile, South Korea said, triggering a scare in northern Japan where Hokkaido residents were initially told to take cover. The missile, fired from near Pyongyang, flew about 1,000 kilometers before landing in waters east of North Korea. The video aired by the state television showed the missile arriving at the launch venue and being launched into space. Developing a solid fuel ICBM has long been seen as a key goal for North Korea as it could help the North deploy its missiles faster in the event of a war. North Korea is expected to conduct more missile launches in the near future as the launches provide data to further the country's missile technology and expert in Seoul after watching video footage of the North's latest missile launch conducted the day before. Analysts said it is the North's first use of solid propellants in an intermediate range or ICBM. Developing a solid fuel ICBM has long been seen as a key goal of North Korea as it could help the North deploy missiles faster during a war. Tens of thousands of revelers, including hordes of foreign tourists armed with plastic water guns, descended on the streets of Bangkok last week for the biggest traditional New Year gathering since the pandemic. Festivities for Songkran, a much-loved Thai festival sometimes described as the world's largest water fight, had been muted or barred for the past few years due mainly to COVID-19 restrictions. Travelers returning to Thailand, the tourism sector is helping revive Southeast Asia's second largest economy. Revelers, many of them soaked to the skin, walked through a half kilometer long stretch in Bangkok's tourist hub of Kaosan Road, indiscriminately firing water guns and dancing to music, blaring from curbside establishments. Moving on. Bihu, which natively translates to wealth and prosperity, is a festival of revelry and marks the beginning of the Assamese New Year. It is the most gastronomical festival of India's northeastern state of Assam. Marking the arrival of spring and the beginning of the harvest season, this festival is special for the Assamese as it keeps them connected to their culture. This year's Bihu was unique in multiple ways, for not only was it celebrated with even more pomp and fervor, but it also created a world record. Let's know it all through this story. 
The culture of Assam is the pride of Assam and its heritage is glorified by celebrations of festivals indigenous to the region. Assam celebrates Bohang Bihu, which marks the Assamese New Year and falls at an idiosyncratic phase of the farming season. This year, the celebration was on a different level, with folk dances pulsating with its past and echoing through its rich heritage. A record of more than 10,000 dancers and musicians performed Assam's Bihu dance. They took this traditional dance form to global stage making record for largest Bihu dance performance and the largest performance by folk musicians that included traditional instruments like dhol, pepa, gogona and toka. The colourful spectacle gave goosebumps to the onlookers who had come to witness celebration from different corners of India. अच्छा लग रहा है एक्चुअली असमिया होके असम का होके एक बहुत ही प्राउड मोमेंट है इस वक्त असम का बिहु हमारा उत्सव जातीय उत्सव जो वर्ल्ड रिकॉर्ड में अभी जस्ट वर्ल्ड रिकॉर्ड करके हो चुका है तो अभी बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है प्रिपरेशंस फॉर दिस इयर्स बिहु वाज स्टार्टेड लॉन्ग बैक द मार्केट वाज टेक्ड अप विद एसेंशियल आइटम्स फॉर द फेस्टिवल as a ritual, people gift gamcha, a hand-woven scarf, to their friends and families. Bihu is quintessentially a festival food. Assam has a culinary tradition and hence its celebration is incomplete without the special rice dishes. चल पीठा, नारकल का पीठा, लड्डू बनाते हैं नारियल का, टील का भी लड्डू बनाते हैं, गीला पीठा बनाते हैं और चावल अलग चावल का भी हम लोग पीठा पकड़ा बनाते हैं। Bihu is believed to be a festival dedicated to worshiping Lord Agni, the fire god. Assamese from around the country and abroad travel home to mark this festival which they deem the most auspicious in their calendar. With rising popularity and the level of fervour associated with the festival, people in the other parts of the country too have started celebrating the Bihu festival. To worship the god on Bihu, people gather at a place where they burn Bhela Ghar, a temporary shelter, and use its ash as manure. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. People have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect.